My number three movie that shaped my sense of joy is That Thing You Do, exclamation point, from <laughs> 1996. I love when movie titles put put punctuation in there. I guess I should say, That Thing You Do. Is that, I, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is a film uh, written and directed by Tom Hanks, starring Tom Hanks, Liv Tyler, Tom Everett Scott, Steve Zahn, and Giovanna Ribisi. The IMDb plot summary, a local Pennsylvania band scores a one-hit wonder in 1964 and rides the star-making machinery as long as they can with lots of help from their manager. So this movie, you know, I'll, I'll kind of talk briefly about the different things in this movie that to me give me those those feelings of joy and that I'd love to talk to you about the film and then kind of dive into the film more itself. So uh, for me, this movie, because like the plot summary describes, is about this small band who's sort of a pickup band, the garage band, for lack of a better word, that then all of a sudden has this big success and they they are this one hit wonder and seeing their their success as a group. And that's something to me that definitely brings me joy of, of seeing and sharing in the success of a team that I'm on or an endeavor that I'm doing, whether it's a performance, you know, I was involved a lot in musical groups in, in high school and college. And that sense of when things are coming together and you're going out there and you're really gelling as a group, that definitely does make me have have that sense of joy and that feeling of, of happiness. It's also great too to, to see that just as a, other people experiencing it in this film that joyous moments of like when they first hear their song on the radio or the parents mm -hmm. of one of the band members they're watching their their kid on television for the first time and just seeing that their their sense of pride in their other people which is definitely something that can give me a sense of joy and then you know just from a surface level you know this movie set in the mid 60s I really love the mid 60s aesthetic, especially this guitar pop music of the time, you know, like the monkeys and the archies and love and spoonful, the zombies, the Beatles. This is all mu music that even though I did not grow up in the 60s, I'm, I was way I'm not even born yet. I, I grew up with that music through all these stations, and it does bring me this sense of joy. And this music is so sweet and fun. And and uh, every time I listen to it, it makes uh, makes me happy. And this is something that this movie does a brilliant job, even though this band did not exist and the music was all written for the film, it captures that spirit of that mid-60s guitar pop that always brings me joy. So those are sort of the high-level reasons why this film related to relates to me so much, and every time I watch it, I just cannot stop smiling. So have had you seen this film? And let's talk a little more about the film. Yeah, I had not seen the movie. I obviously know of the song, and I don't know why, for whatever reason, never watched this movie. So hmm. I was very happy to check it out. I know it's Tom Hanks's directorial debut I it think. is yeah yes. yeah. yeah wrote yeah. read screenplay debut too he never yeah. written anything at yeah. this point but the song is i always knew of the song that i the title song so it was fun to check it out i agree with you the 60s vibe gives me a lot of joy to the bright colors and mm -hmm. and the music paired with that is an instant joyous thing so this is very much in my wheelhouse i was really happy to check it out and then i agree i think the movie is the most joyous, but also the works the most when those celebratory moments are happening, when mm -hmm. these characters are, you know, feeling a sense of validation or the song is, you know, hits on the radio. That amazing scene when they all run to the electronic store yes. of the parents of one of the kids, Liv Tyler, everybody like that. I wanted to like jump up from my seat and cheer, you know, yeah. it, it really captures that kind of unadulterated joy so beautifully in 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 obviously period costume and you know all of it like it's amazing mm -hmm. so i really enjoyed the movie in in that sense i will say though and maybe this is because the whole music biopic trope land is so familiar to us now that how this band disintegrates and how the love story between Liv Tyler and Thomas Everett Scott sort of oh, yeah. happens. Like all <laughs> yeah, of those yeah. things are like very messy. There's really no reason for the lead singer to start to drift away. It just mm -hmm. doesn't feel really tied up very well together. And then the second thing, which I don't, I'm curious to hear your take on this, but the main lead, the drummer, Thomas Everett Scott, to me feels like is doing a Tom Hanks impression throughout the entire movie. Oh, interesting. And I found that so distracting because I, I just was like, it's almost like Tom Hanks wanted to be in this movie or or this actor just picked up Tom Hanks' mannerisms and just, just did that. And Tom Hanks being the director was like, yep, keep doing that. That's pretty good. So there's something about that that I don't know if I felt, found it to be distracting. But other than that, the movie is really fun. The music is really good. 
and it definitely hits the spot from like a joy standpoint. So I was happy to watch it. That's a fun, I mean, I've seen this movie maybe a half a dozen times. I, I saw it growing up when it, I mean, I've seen this in the theater and I just loved the soundtrack and watched a lot. I've yeah. actually never thought of that before around the Tom Hanks, essentially like an impersonation for lack of a better word. I think, yeah, that he definitely is. He feels like a mid eighties Tom Hanks when he was in all those comedies in, in the mid to late eighties, he's doing a lot yeah. of that. And and I wonder if it is a lot of um, just Tom, cause he wrote the movie too, much like how Woody Allen, especially after he became too old to stars of his own movies, he right. would cast these people to basically just playing himself in these movies. Right. And he'd write them too. I wonder if this Tom Hanks kind of did the same thing here too. Cause it is actually kind of a, now that I think more about it, like a spot on sort of impersonation of a Tom Hanks in 1986, what he would do with a part like this. And he kind of even yeah. looks a little bit like him. The mannerisms are, are similar to him. That's, that's really uh that's a really interesting point. Uh, I, <laughs> I never, I never really thought about that, but yeah, like not only do I love that scene too, of the everyone running down the street and you see, you know, the, the, putting all the, the song on all the radios in the appliance store. But I also just love seeing the evolution of the song and how yeah. it's sort of the happy accidents of they wrote the song. It's sort of a slow song. And then accidentally the drummer just starts too fast on one performance. I love that and all scene. of a sudden now it's like a dance song and that's what sort of makes it a hit. And it's sort of fun because, you know, in the beginning of the movie, it's about a one hit wonder band. You sort of know where this is going to go. And like you said, it's very predictable in every single possible way. But there's also, you know, a a sweetness to that. It's like it's just a simple yeah. story of a band who starts out and they accidentally fall into this, have a big hit song and the whole thing disintegrates overnight. But, you know, in the end of the movie, there's a, you know, one of my favorite things in movies when they end with like the photos from the yearbook or whatever. It's like, what happened to these, you know, mm -hmm. like the uh, the Animal House ending or whatever. And all the stories are all have happy endings. Like no yeah. one, nothing bad happens to any of these people. You know, even the, the one guy who is obsessed with being in the army and he actually leaves the band to go essentially serve in Vietnam, you know, and any kind of other movies, like, okay, he died and blah, blah, blah. Right. Like, but no, he, he doesn't die. Like no one dies. Like, and Tom Everett Scott and Liv Tyler get together for some reason, even though they don't, it's like for the purpose of the plot. It's like, okay, fine. They have a romance, whatever. No like, sense why... no sense. <laughs> yeah. That's my thing, right? Like, there's a very, very good movie in here, not to be critical, because it's still very joyous and I mean, fun. You can be critical of it, yeah. Which is that I wish they had dealt with the conflict beats just better. It's, just, it's a screenplay, you know? Like, yeah, these yeah. things just don't really add up. I'm happy with even predictability if it's done well and it makes sense. It just doesn't really make sense. But I, I do love that what you said, that everybody gets a happy ending. Yeah, and yeah. Nice. I mean, yeah. I think the screenplay is very, yeah, lighthearted. Kanks' direction is very breezy and simple, and there's nothing he's not trying to be showy yeah. or overcomplicated here. It's just a very paint-by-numbers story, but I think the colorful production design, the energy of all the young stars in the film, and also yeah. Tom Hanks, I think, does a, a fun job coming in as as their manager in the, in the movie, yeah. and, you know, you he sort of plays... Uh, not like overly nice manager, but not like a mean one either. He sort of understands and knows that this band is not going to last very long, but he, you know, he does a fun performance too. And I always love Tom Hanks in a movie as well. So I think overall this, this movie is incredibly sweet and simple, almost like a, a TV movie, but performances and just, again, the, the incredible song is, is just, is so good, which, which I guess the, uh, the songwriter of these songs was the lead singer of Fountains of Wayne and he passed away during COVID. So definitely RIP to oh. him. I think this is some of his best sort of the pastiches of sixties pop, but he does it so well. You, you think all these songs are real, but not, but none yeah. of them are. Yeah. Yeah. Also yeah. fun fact. This is where um, Tom Hanks's production company Playtone comes from is, right, is movie, right. which is a yeah, fun, yeah. a fun little nod. Every time I see that, and if it's like yeah. uh, his, you know, band of brothers or like the Pacific, it's like Playtone. I'm like, oh yeah, that thing you do. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me smile. Just seeing the, seeing that uh, company logo. <laughs> yeah. I have to give a shout out to Liv Tyler as well. Like I had not seen her in a movie in a while. And I was like, she's so good in this movie. She's so good. She has such a, I wish people knew what to do with her because she kind of was at a time where I guess people are not writing characters that, that were fully formed. and But even with the little bit she's given to do in this movie, she makes so much out of it. Her presence is so noteworthy. She pops and has like a lot of layers and textures to her performance, who's kind of the woman, you know, left behind, if you will, and is along for the ride, but is not really noticed, but is still not forgettable, mm -hmm. you know? 
I love that. She's she actually stole the movie from a performance standpoint in my mind. Yeah, she's a great a- actress. I or, or just I used to like her a lot in in, yeah. in the nineties, and yeah, I don't know really kind of where her where her career went. I also point out Steve Zahn. I think also does a great job in this too. Is sort of the, the wacky zany part yeah. of the band. I think he uh, this is a star turn for him in terms of starting off on his little run that he had for for a couple of years. But I'm glad you glad you enjoyed it. Glad you enjoyed yeah. it. Hey there, it's Alex. If you like the review and discussion Kron and I just had, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Movies That Shaped Us, to get full episodes. Every other Wednesday, Kron and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.